I hate vlogging, and I especially hate vlogging with a gorilla pod. Oh. I haven't used a gorilla pod for years. I tried. I did what everyone else was doing, the Peter McKinnons and Casey Neistats, but I just didn't get on with it. It was extra bulk and weight I didn't need, and it just slowed me down when I could just hold the camera in my hand. Plus, I use the Rode wireless mics with a lav because that sounds pretty good and gives me freedom. So when Joby reached out and asked if I'd like to review their latest vlogging kit of a gorilla pod and a Wavo Pro mic, naturally, I said no. And then I thought about it some more, and I like to think I'm an open-minded guy, but a big factor is I recently moved from the Canon RP to the R7, which is a superior camera in many ways, but it is crop sensor where the RP is full frame. And that means all my lenses aren't as wide as they used to be. So my 16 mil is more now like a 24 mil, and that's almost too close. So even though I have quite long arms, I'm six foot four and all in proportion, stop it, uh, that extra bit of length could come in handy. So I went back to Joby and said I would do the review, but only if they were okay with me being honest, which would be bold of them to agree to, given my current feelings and history. So here I am about to go into the photography and video show in Birmingham, and I'm gonna use these to vlog about my experience. And hopefully that'll be a good test. All right, we're in the show, it's Monday morning, and it's just opened. Let's go and see what we can find. There's loads of talks, one's going on right now, all about how to photograph dogs. Ooh. Joby say it's the most popular tripod in the world. So why do people use them? A big reason is probably for length when vlogging. Then there are the mini tripod options to wrap around things or use in uneven surfaces. It's a bit of a Swiss army knife of mini tripods. This 3K version here is made of premium grade ABS as a ball head, and it can support cameras up to, you guessed it, three kilos, which is most mirrorless cameras and mid-range DSLRs, easily handling this Canon R7 and the 16 millimeter lens, which is about 800 grams. The Gorilla Pod itself weighs about 300 grams, so it's rather light, Oh, and it costs about 60 quid. There were some great tutorials as well as a variety of stands, often from lighting companies, that allowed anyone who'd brought their own camera to shoot models in different scenarios. So lots of people will be sharing similar images on their socials, I imagine. Here's some of my very quick passing snaps. Then there was also a space called the Creator Playground to take shots for Instagram or whatever to show how wacky and interesting you are, as well as fascinating talks, intriguing stands, and some new products. I'm gonna have a little whinge about the photography and video show at the NEC. It's about this. There's stuff behind me here and all this. the space. And the problem is, wherever you look around the NEC, there are people sitting on the floor eating. People sitting on the floor drinking, which is ridiculous on all this space. So it happens year after year, same thing every time. Why can't we just put some more chairs and tables in this space? Then we can all sit down, have a drink, have some food. I feel better about the rest of the day. Wind over. I met up with the team over at Atmos who make an awesome range of on-camera monitors and partnered with my team at Tide Media to showcase the Ninja Ultra and Connect system that revolutionized our workflow by letting us send files to editors as they are recorded. Then it was time to go over to the Joby stand. The Wavo Pro has a familiar look to it, but at the same time, it's a bit different and quirky. My favorite thing about this is you can record a safety track 10 decibels lower than your main recording. I've done this for years on lab mic packs and it's a bit of a game changer when things get a bit unpredictable and a bit hot and it will one day save your ass. Congratulations, yeah, great talk. Uh, it basically splits the signal and sends the normal one to the left and the safety to the right. So you have to process your audio a bit in post, but that's a small price to pay for that peace of mind. It's also got built-in active noise reduction aimed at cleaning up bumps from walking or handling the camera and hopefully, uh, noisy areas like this, we'll see. It's coupled with a brand new shock mount from Lyco as well, so this all should be working together. But by now, you might know better than me if all this is working. There's a few more features too over most on-camera mics I've used. There's really nice clear LEDs 
to show the audio levels in real time. I just wish they were on the front here rather than on the back. Great if you're operating the camera, but not so great if you're vlogging. It also has a second mic input to hook up a lav for interviews and also an app to control all the settings by Bluetooth. Joby called this the most advanced on-camera shotgun mic on the market, and that comes with a price tag of 250 quid, which makes me think Joby must be pretty confident in their product to send it to me, a non-believer, to try it out. Really intrigued by this, the Canon EOS VR. It's something I have zero interest in actually using, but still interested to see what it can do, especially as Canon isn't particularly known for being quick to react to emerging tech. Then I saw a stand where I really have to be disciplined because I love it all. Oh. Okay, this, uh, I, don't, I don't have a full-size tripod with me at the show, so hopefully I can use this big yellow pole. Right. Okay. So one thing I've learned about the Gorillapod is that size matters. The problem I had before is that I just went for the big one with my old camera and the, the, the big full-size Gorillapod. I didn't need that one, but I, I went for it because it was the biggest and I thought it was the best idea. So now I've got the 3K, it's a lot lighter, a lot more manageable. So don't make that mistake and be tempted to get one that's not really the right one for your camera. This camera is supported perfectly fine by the 3K version. It's a much better choice. All right, this, this makes me nervous. Good. Success. I hate vlogging, and I especially hate vlogging with a gorilla pod. Oh. That's what I would have told you in 2019, which is pretty much the last time I did it. But this new version, this is winning me over. It was a good show and nice to catch up with friends and meet other new faces. But how was the Joby gear? Well, first of all, I just want to say how much stuff Joby makes for creators now. There was a table full of mics, lights, water housings, motion control, and more. But let's get on to the Gorilla Pod. My previous concerns about weight were null and void thanks to this lighter pod. And far from being bulky or problematic, it was actually nice to have a different option for carrying the camera while walking. The plastic ABS does make it quite comfortable to grip it by the balls, as it were. I do like to be able to be hands-free when filming to camera, but hate taking a tripod anywhere, so without this Gorilla Pod, I wouldn't have been able to get that shot on the yellow bollard. Now, the Wavo Pro mic. I'll be honest, I was skeptical, but I'm genuinely impressed. It was way smaller than I thought from the promo pics and sounded better than I expected, especially as this was recorded in a super noisy environment. I recorded plug and play straight out of the box, which was nice and easy. The mic turns on and off automatically, but my favorite feature is the safety track. This is huge, and I can't understand why it's not a feature on more mics. That alone makes me want to put the Wavo Pro on my camera. Oh, and when I moved from talking about the Gorillapod to the Wavo Pro, I switched from using my twice the price industry standard Shure SM7B mic to the Joby. Did you notice? So is this Gorillapod and Wavo Pro mic a good combo for vlogging? Well, you should try it out and make your own mind up. But the answer is yes, by the way. 